Live from Mountain View, California, it's The Cube at OpenStack Silicon Valley, brought to you by headline sponsor, Mirantis. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back here to the OpenStack Silicon Valley live broadcast for theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out through the events and extract the ceiling from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle, joined by my co host Jeff Frick here in Palo Alto for the Cube office. Our next guest, John Dickerson, with Swift Stack and the OpenStack Swift Project Technical Lead. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much for having me. Um, so obviously storage is at the epicenter. We cover all the storage shows, EMC, <laughs> VMware, all that's going on in Flash. Storage is where the action is. Big data, big part of the cloud, mobile, social, yeah, data absolutely. exhaust, yeah. internet of things. It's just the list goes on and on. So you're in the battleground, okay? So talk about what's going on with Swift and some of the design decisions you're making, what new projects are coming out, some highlights. Give us the quick uh, update. Sure. Uh, in Swift, we've been, uh, been doing some great things recently. Uh, we just recently completed a year-long development effort inside of the community, uh, led by people from SwiftStack and, uh, and Red Hat and Box and Intel, uh, to uh, put together a feature we're calling Storage Policies. And Storage Policies let you choose what subset of hardware you store your data on and then how you store it across that subset of data. So you can set up geographic localization, you can set up um, uh, different performance tiers, all inside of the same managed, uh, the same cluster. You could even do things that are along the lines of, I want to choose different replication models. And we're extending this right now by working on implementing erasure codes as a storage policy inside of Swift. So you can have your, your global Swift cluster uh, that is, here's data that's stored in one local place, here's data that's stored in another place, here's data that's distributed throughout it, and different data can be replicated versus erasure coded versus reduced redundancy uh, replication, just all de very specifically depending on your use case. And I think that's the exciting thing about it, is that it really helps, it, it gives applications the actual, uh, the, the power then they, and the flexibility that they need so the applications can continue providing their value and that they can become more effective and uh, more efficient in how they're consuming object storage. So what's the big change between last uh, Atlanta and now? Obviously Atlanta, big part of the conversation, certainly Docker is being talked about as a container, not necessarily related to what your project is, right. but we are talking about application developers who want infrastructure sure. as code, right? That's the DevOps ethos. Right, but with hybrid cloud, IT is not so much DevOps oriented, but they just want the same benefits. So I think that uh, there's been a lot of really great uh, development in that sort of thing, looking at deployment models, uh, but very specifically looking at how do, you, how do you provide value to the end user, and that comes from those applications. So my view is that we very much need to be focused on giving the tools and flexibility to people uh, who are application developers so that they can then develop the, they can focus on providing their value add and the storage system like Swift can offload the hard problems of storage so that people can actually focus on solving the real world use cases that they have. So I don't know if you have any, any uh, tangential data from the customers but talk a lot about Flash and the growth right. of Flash and, and the evolution of Flash and moving from really kind of high value, low latency applications into more general purpose applications and, and really uh, Flash kind of native applications. Right. Are you seeing a lot of that or is that something you guys even, is that one step above where you're, uh, where you're playing? No, it's not. It's, about it's, the adoption of the Flash. It's not at all where we are, uh, it's not at all uh, above where we are right now, but it's definitely something that is coming on the horizon. Uh, Flash is incredibly exciting and offers a lot of really new uh, possibilities, a whole lot more than just it's faster. Right, but you right, actually have right. new usage models that can, that can really take advantage of all the native characteristics of uh, that storage in silicon. But, uh, so we're definitely keeping our eye on that. So we're seeing it a little bit now with uh, looking at high performance tiers and things like that, but it's not quite yet at the cost point where it's competitive for the large, I mean, you know, if we're talking petabytes and petabytes of storage sort of thing. Uh, in, that, in that use case, uh, it's not a huge, uh, a huge market driver right now, but it's definitely something we're looking at on the horizon. Yeah, and clearly if it's software defined, they can tweak that based on uh, in real time based on application demands and or specific use cases or the whole thing. The whole value of OpenStack Swift is that with the storage system, you've decoupled the data 
from the actual infrastructure that it sits on, which means that you can have your system, you don't have to worry about what data is it stored on, what happens when that fails, what life cycle is that data in, and how does the deployer rotate it out from behind, which means that your clusters can continue to get better over time as you get newer hardware and move to things like Flash and stuff like that. So yes, I think it's absolutely important and critical. And, and, and what do, are people more excited about the cost savings? Or are people more excited just about higher utilization? Or are people more excited about really the dynamic structure that enables them to do things that they couldn't do before with that decoupling? I think it's a combination of all of those. Uh, but the, the biggest, probably the thing that first attracts people to that is the fact that you don't have to deal with the management of your storage infrastructure. You can treat it as a consumable utility. That's the promise of the cloud, right? Right, right. Uh, and so if you've got an application that is, well, if you look at guys like mobile phone apps and things like this, they're being bought for hundreds of millions or billions of dollars, but they don't have to worry about how do I deal with the concurrent data usage on across millions of devices and, and scaling that out. They can simply just treat it as, you, as a resource by using uh, object storage. What's next? What are you excited about? What are we going to be talking about a year from now? <laughs> well, I think that uh, in, a, in a year from now, uh, inside of OpenStack Swift, you'll see uh, erasure codes uh, implemented. You'll also see other, um, other capabilities built on top of storage policies. And uh, we're also working on ensuring that we can uh, really build out some of the efficiencies of the system so that uh, you can get denser, denser deployments, you can get better cost savings overall. Uh, overall, my, my view and my point, my, my goal as, as the project technical lead for Swift is to say what are the use cases that need to be solved, where, where, what other new use cases can we solve, and how can we solve the existing use cases better. So I think we're going to continue walking down that. We've got a great community behind us. Uh, it's, it's tremendously exciting to be a part of. Great. John, talk about some of the conversations, you know, and we were talking with uh, Joe Maitland, who's now Google X uh, media analyst. There's always good, healthy debates around good progress, and so obviously storage is some block, you got, sure. you got block, you got flash, you got object, object storage, where the action is, we know that. Um, what are some of the conversations that you guys are involved in? I mean, there's some, we had some commentary on CrowdChat earlier, you know, Ceph versus Swift versus, you know, other things. What's your take on all that? It's a huge question. <laughs> we could probably <laughs> spend another hour talking about that. Here's the highlight reel. Here's the <laughs> yeah. Reader's Digest. So I, I mean, think there's two big points on that. Uh, the first part is that within the within the the world of looking at what applications are using. Uh, you've got a world that's moving from traditional filers and SANs and things like that and, and, and embracing object storage. That's the big shift. It's not a particular object storage system. It's just we need to make this shift so that we know that when we get an integrated product and just buy it off the shelf, that we know it speaks natively to object storage. And the advantage of that is the fact that, again, the object storage system, uh, that software-defined thing, is able to offload those hard problems so the applications can build out efficiency and their own value uh, very well. Now, inside of this whole trend to object storage, you've got obviously a lot of different people providing different things. Uh, and my perspective on this is that we know that everybody has data, it's always growing, and you need to have ownership of everything that touches your data. And the only possible way you can do that is with uh, open systems. And that's something that OpenStack gives you, is it's not just, a, it's not the, uh, just the fact that you can look at the code, but the whole, the whole reason we're here is we have a community that is open that people can get involved with, uh, in the governance, the code, all of that. And so uh, rather than trying to sling mud with other uh, implementations of object storage, uh, I think that people Well, there's always religious wars, so to of speak, course. technically in, in communities, but the, the transition is real. I mean, object store speaks to the mega trends that we're all living in. That's DevOps, the big data, you know, integrated stacks, where applications are in control, so this needs some agility. Of right? course. Really a big deal. That is a, just a fundamental approach. <laughs> it's a mindset. So, you know, splitting the, the, the wars, you know, philosophies apart, um, where are we with object store? What are some of the key uh, evolutionary innovation conversations happening? Is it just erasure codes? Or is there anything else? I think that the, the promise that you get from object storage and that, and that model is the fact that you can, conf you can you can have your storage infrastructure actually respond and be configured very specifically to your use case. And that's something that you don't want something that's a one size fit all solution uh, that, is, that is very rigid in, in how, you're, how you're deploying and how you're consuming the software. 
So what I think you're going to see is people who are able to uh, take advantage of uh, lack of hardware lock-in, but also open systems, and configure it to exactly their needs. Yeah, That's yeah, the trend. I think the whole adaptive programming models of the years ago vision is happening right now, but it's happening in cloud in a different way. Um, super exciting. John Dickerson, thanks for coming on theCUBE. I want to give you the last word and share with the folks out there who want to know what's happening, who aren't here in Silicon Valley. Um, what is the big thing happening here at OpenStack this year? What should they need to know about what's going on today? Well, thank you very much for having me. Uh, this has been a, a really great day, morning already, uh, here at the OpenStack SV thing. And I think that the big conversations continued this morning even uh, within OpenStack today have to do a lot about figuring out how we move forward as a community and governance to, to scale it and accomplish everything that we can over the next four years. So we've learned a lot of lessons so far and figuring out what does it mean to be OpenStack and how does, uh, how does that all fit together is a crucial question to figuring out how we can both scale not only uh, our individual projects, uh, projects technically, but also looking at how do we scale the overall community so that we don't collapse under our own weight. And I think there's some really great ideas and uh, things proposed right now, uh, and I'm looking forward to continuing those discussions. And that's a, those are growing pains. Absolutely. That's not a, con it's not a symptom of success, yes. Yeah, you're not, con you're not getting good, smaller. They're good problems, don't do that. <laughs> it's okay, a hard John problem, Dickerson yeah. with Swift Stack here inside the Cube. Obviously, a lot of great conversations, open community, it's all happening in the sunlight. Hey, you're in the, in the, in the, no, no, uh, no black boxes anywhere. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks. <laughs>